What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and today we are doing a couple things in preparation for hooking up the boost controller on the Super Auto. The cool guys over at the uh, Max Effort YouTube channel, I'll put a link down in the description below, had a spare one sitting on the shelf. They sent it up here for me to borrow for a while and work on the Super Auto to get the boost controlled on the top end because we're making a little bit too much boost. So stick around. <music> So today's video in particular is not going to deal with the boost controller itself so much as we are first installing a new uh, blow-off valve spring on the tile that's in there. There's the one and a half, two PSI supercharger spring that's in there. I'm stepping it up to the five PSI spring that a lot of the uh, Corvette guys run. And then we'll have to do a little bit of tuning because it changes the dynamics of the motor down low in particular right off of idle because the charge pipings hold more pressure. On top of it though, we're going to go ahead and do a boost leak. And I went ahead and bought one of the more expensive, nicer setups that have the condition or the uh, ports for both the gauge and uh, the fill valve, the, the Schrader valve. And you know, you can build one of these out of a cap from Home Depot, but I thought, eh. If it's going to be something I'll probably use a lot. Uh, might as well go ahead and get one that's that's uh, you know a little bit nicer than the rest. And I'll throw a link down to kind of the one that I'm using down there. I got to find the appropriate hoses and stuff. But first, as I said, we're going to pull the tile off. We're going to do the spring swap, and then we'll go from there. So uh, let's let's get let's get started. So as you can see, the tile is really really down in there, and you can tell that I installed this from the bottom side because the uh, clamp is facing the wrong direction. So yeah, sometimes I'm a moron. That'll be kind of fun to try and get undone, but shouldn't be too bad. It's just an Allen wrench. Uh, let's see if we can get that broke free. I want to say that this is around a four millimeter. Those are, so I'm guessing that this one is too. Note to self, position the clamp better next time. What seemed like a good idea at the time is now being a pain in the butt. <sighs> but we've only got a couple more threads to go here. That, that may have been it, yep. At least it's broken loose enough, and okay. Let's pull this thing out. Uh-oh. Well, at least it fell all the way through. And... Bingo. Okay, so be aware, this can be a little bit sketchy. There's only like a two or three pound spring on this one right now, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, but you wanna break all these loose and then back them off slowly because it is under spring pressure. If you are using a uh, blow off valve or a wastegate with a very high spring pressure, keep in mind that sometimes this is a two man job. I'm hoping that this one's not gonna be. I'm gonna take out everything except for two opposing bolts here. And then I'll slowly back those off until we can get the spring out. And this is going to give us a little bit more of a clean or crisp whoosh noise because we're going to be holding more pressure off whenever it finally does let go. That's why a lot of guys run this. Uh, spring a little bit heavier. I'm doing it mainly because I want uh, a little more pressure down low whenever we first get on throttle. The idea behind it is by having the heavier spring, you'll have more pressure pushing against your wastegate. And then whenever you let off, or whenever you hit your throttle, because there's pressure built between your supercharger and your throttle body, whenever we actually then open the throttle body, we've got, you know, five PSI preloaded there on the throttle body as opposed to two or three PSI. So gives us a little more pressure to deal with. We'll see how hard it is to push this thing down by myself. This is where it gets awkward. It's not too bad though, not too bad. But we're much more than this though. I'd probably need an extra set of hands to help. And then let's see if I can get another one started over here. Come on, baby. There we go. Okay, so we 
we got three in now. We should be good. We'll go ahead and run all these down, get it nice and snug. And then we will get the unit reinstalled in the truck with a better facing screw this time on the V-band clamp so we can make sure and easily do this again. And then we'll hook up the tester. So I'm going to go ahead and do all this off screen. Then I'll bring you back in as we do the pressure test. Okay, we've got everything hooked up here. I apologize that it's going to get a little bit noisy in here. I'm going to try and zoom in a little bit on this gauge so you can see it a little bit better down here in the corner and put the focus on it there. As I said, we're looking to pressurize this thing up above 5 PSI to see if it'll hold any. I know there's a couple leaks here. But we'll see what it does. I apologize, the air compressor is small. It is getting ready to kick on here, but hopefully you can see our gauge all right. So we have a pretty significant leak over here on this crappy weld I did. Not surprised since I was using a spool gun as opposed to a TIG welder to try and do this weld, but... And there's another one. I'm trying to tell if that is... Yeah, that's the big one. So we've got a big one there on this elbow. I tell you what, I'm probably just going to go ahead and pull this off real quick and run a silicone coupler over this, this uh, seam until I can get a TIG welder in here, grind it down, clean this up, or even replace this section. This is by far the ugliest section of pipe. Can you even see what I'm pointing at there? Yeah. So it is by far the ugliest section of pipe through here. Uh, but, you know, it's just on the, the list of things that the shop needs. So let me do that real quick, and then we'll, we'll try it again. Okay, so... I forgot that the MAF sensor was down here and then we've got uh, a couple bungs down here. So I wasn't able to get a collar on there. I actually, I did though. I split one and then I triple clamped it to hopefully it was only leaking on the bottom side. Maybe that'll seal up enough to help. Uh, so let's come back over here and focus down on our gauge again. And let's see what happens. See if we hold air a little bit better because that was a pretty significant leak, I'll admit it. I know there's a couple other small ones in here that I'm less concerned about. Yeah, unfortunately, that's just about as good as it's going to get for right now until I can replace this section of tubing. So we know we got a couple leaks, not surprising, but nothing really too severe except for that one in the uh, section of tubing right before the throttle body. That's something probably that's easiest going to be uh, fixed by pulling it off, grinding the paint off, getting the spool gun back out, and really laying a thick weld back and forth across there. So that's a <laughs> that is a project for a different day. For today. Uh, we changed out the spring on the uh, blow-off valve, so we should have a little different boost dynamics down low. And then, as I said, we verified that this thing holds over, you know, a good 10 PSI before it starts leaking. So it's not that critical. It will build boost beyond that because the supercharger is pulling down so far. So we're not going to have much issues, uh, specifically since we're getting ready to throw a boost controller on there that will uh, cap our boost out at about 10 PSI to keep us safe. So, uh, pretty straightforward stuff. Hadn't planned on really getting too dirty today, but, you know, as always, managed to find a way to make myself bleed. Uh, but, you know, 
keep posted. There's going to be some other stuff coming up here soon on the Super Auto as we explore some different options. There's going to be a video coming out on tuning for the new blow-off valve spring. Yes, you have to tune for blow-off valve springs on superchargers like this because, as I said, it will change the, vol the volumetric efficiency dynamics of the engine down low. And so it'll run a little bit wonky, may not idle right, right off the bat, but uh, keep your eyes peeled for that video coming out soon. As always, if you have not hit the subscribe button, go ahead and click that down below. Uh, like this video if you found any of this information uh, useful or, or interesting. And uh, you know, remember, uh, ABT, always be tuning in. Thanks for stopping by the garage.